Eastern Europe, a place on Earth that is so filled with history. Oh, how long I have been waiting for you. My name is Isabel, named after my great-grandmother who came from this part of the world. Five weeks ago, when my dad showed me a pair of airplane tickets, I was stunned. Gosh, this is so cool. Quick, Daddy, take a picture. Finally, this was going to be it. So what's the hurry? Europe isn't going anywhere. I know, I just want my first moments in check out on camera. Seeing the buildings was so exciting and I didn't know what to do first. As I was in a foreign country for the first time, I realized that getting lost could be easy because I couldn't understand the language. In high school, I loved studying history, and for me it was like going back in time. I wanted to dig deeper into how life must have been back then. But first, we wanted to go to the hotel and get some rest. Even though I had studied so much about this area's history, I had no idea what I would find here, and that made me even more excited. Dad said he had been here many years ago with his class in college, but I didn't want him to spoil the surprise by telling me everything he knows. I was just too thrilled with the idea of making my own first experiences. We jumped into the next taxi and we were on our way to the best hotel, located directly in the center of the city. My dad wanted to get some more rest and he agreed on letting me explore a bit alone before we would have dinner together. I grabbed my camera and headed out to the streets. The architecture of the buildings around me was overwhelming. I stopped in a beautiful city square and out of the corner of my eye I caught a large building. While taking a picture I was interrupted by a man that seemed to be local. It's a nice building you're shooting. This is the courthouse from the town and it was built in 1892. You can see that you know, all the way up there over the clock. He knew about the history of the building and about the city. Have you been long here in the city? Oh, no, me and my dad just got here. Where are you from? From America. America? Oh, nice country. Yeah. Lots of nice things. I assumed he was a tourist guide, so I agreed to go with him around the city for a bit when he asked. There's some really nice places around here. I can show you around a little bit and, you know. Yeah, that sounds good. Go this way. This is really nice mountain. He was really nice and told me everything about everything. After a while, he led me to a side street, promising that there was something really cool to see. Meanwhile, I found something interesting that I wanted to take a picture of. In the corner of my eye, I saw a van pulling up, but before I realized what was happening, I found myself pushed into the back seat. I must have fainted because the next thing I knew, I woke up in the dark. I was in the van and there was a man sitting in front of me I didn't recognize. My imagination was running crazy when my stomach suddenly turned upside down and I threw up in the car. Expecting at least a napkin, I found my face dumped into my half-digested lunch. After crying myself to sleep, I woke up again, wrapped in a blanket in a dark place. Half of my clothes were gone, and I was freezing. Footsteps caught my attention. They were coming closer and closer to my room when finally the man I saw in the van opened the door. He came close to me and told me what he was going to do. and his voice was no mercy. The door slammed behind him and he unzipped his pants. There was nothing I could do then and there was nothing I could do for the next two weeks. He came to me a couple times every day after that, not just to bring food. Barely dressed, I ended up standing in the rain on the streets of a place that was shared with other women daily. The two other girls and I rotate turns so we don't freeze too much. It was my first time on the streets. 
When that car pulled up, I knew I had to take the next customer. The face that I will never forget is just 20 meters away, watching and making sure I do what he tells me to. Seeing one of the girls get into a car, I just wanted to wake up from the nightmare. They would drive off into a side street and 20 minutes later she would come back. The next day we were standing in front of the building our brothel was in. Counting the money we charged our customers, it added up to around 1,200 euros every day. Some people would pass by and not even look at me. They didn't know that I had been stolen and I couldn't tell them because Vladimir, the boss, said he would kill me if I told anyone. Vladimir always thought of new ways to humiliate us. Females, dinner time. Being the new one, I quickly learned how that worked. Want a drink? Thank you. <laughs> this is happening right in the middle of a city surrounded by people with normal jobs and normal lives. How can someone be so evil? How can that evil last? And there are even people from far away that come to have part in the life that these women are living. Vladimir was presenting us as usual, making fun of us, treating us like traded goods. But this time, things would be different. How about this? Look at this. Seventeen. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Thirty euros. Twenty. For you, America, I do you a good deal. Fifteen euros. As this customer and I walked into the building, I started to speak. This voice 
This is her song.